devastated. What's going on? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your favorite source for information about broken bones and other stuff. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. So today the topic is Kevin Hart's recovery status. So let's talk about it. So if you don't know, Kevin Hart was involved in a very serious motor vehicle accident approximately two months ago. For more information on what happened, you can check out my other video on Kevin Hart's accident. I'll leave a link down below in the description. But basically, we're now two months after the motor vehicle accident, and on October 30th of 2019, Kevin Hart released a video to give us an update about his status. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to review the video and talk not only about the information that Kevin Hart shares with us, but also about the information that we can glean from the video itself. So in the opening sequence, we can see that Kevin Hart is being helped up to a seated position um, from his hospital bed. And I am assuming that this is when he was in the rehab facility where he remained for two weeks after the accident. And we can see here that when they help him up, they're using a particular sequence. So initially, Kevin is in a supine position, laying on his back. They first have him roll to his side, and then they help him up from his side to the seated position. So this is a common method that we use to help people get to a seated position when they've suffered an injury to their spine. And this is because we want to avoid forward spinal flexion. Raising to a seated position by bending forward would cause an increase in forces at the thoracic and the lumbar spine. And this is something that we would want to avoid, especially after he had had a stabilization procedure for thoracic and lumbar spine fractures. We can also see here that he is wearing a TLSO brace, a thoracolumbar sacral orthosis. And this is a brace that stabilizes the spine between the thorax and the sacrum, or the chest and the pelvis. The primary purpose of this brace is to keep the spine erect and straight at all times, and this is especially important after he has undergone a spinal stabilization procedure. The next thing that we can see in the sequence is that he is using a walker here to raise to a standing position. It is not at all uncommon for patients who have undergone spinal surgery or patients who have had a spinal cord injury to experience some degree of weakness or to have some motor deficits at the level of the spinal cord injury or in their lower extremities. And these deficits may be of a transient nature or in some cases, unfortunately, be of a permanent nature. And these deficits may be a function of the original injury, swelling that occurred after the injury, or complications that have occurred after the surgery to stabilize the spine. Further on in the video, we get to see the midline incision on his mid-back where his surgery was performed. And this is the typical incision for a midline approach for a posterior decompression and instrumented fusion of the lower thoracic spine. And based on the location of this incision, we can guess that his injury and his subsequent surgery involved the lower thoracic upper lumbar spine area. We can also see here that they are using some muscle stim to facilitate muscle activation during his rehab. It is also possible, however, that they're just using TENS as a muscle control or analgesic modality. We can also see that his therapist is performing some massage or some manipulation of the scar. And I also think this is important to help with breakdown of scar tissue in and beneath the incision and also to assist with movement in the thoracolumbar area. One of the things that I think that is extremely important to point out is that we can see here a sequence where he is going through active rehabilitation. In other words, he's performing stretching exercises, strengthening exercises, proprioception and balance exercises, all of these things to help him get better. After he has suffered an injury and undergone surgery, it goes without saying that he is going to be deconditioned and his muscles are going to be weaker. There is no way to restore the strength and the flexibility and the movement uh, of those muscles without actually engaging in exercise. And we can see here that they are working him out in the gym to restore his strength, balance, and his flexibility. We see here that they are also employing hydrotherapy as a active rehabilitation modality. And I think this is also important for a number of reasons. Number one, the water provides more resistance than does the air. So this is a way of progressively strengthening the muscles if he is still too weak to do actual resistance training with weights or with therabands. So the water provides some resistance, so this, is, so this is a good thing. But number two, the water also provides buoyancy. 
And so this is beneficial for two reasons. First, it's more forgiving if he still is having troubles with balance. The water will help to stabilize him and slow down his movements so that he doesn't fall to the ground. It's also going to help to reduce the amount of impact that's going through his skeleton and therefore through his spine because his landings will be softer. And I think that this is important while he is still rehabilitating and while his fracture is healing to ensure that the fusion is stable and that the implants that they have used for stabilization are not loosened by the, the impact when he is moving around. So this is all active therapy and this is extremely, extremely important for his recovery. After the rehabilitation sequence, they show uh, a number of clips of him moving about the house, interacting with people. And uh, the takeaway here is that basically he is moving very fluidly. When we look closely at this sequence, we can see that he is moving around without any obvious motor deficits. He, he doesn't seem to be tripping or stumbling over anything. And we can even see in the one sequence that he's dancing around a little bit. And, and so we know that basically his motor function to his lower extremities is nearly 100%, if not 100% intact. So that is a minor miracle given the severity of the accident that he was involved with. And finally, we get to see a clip with Kevin speaking to his physician um, after his surgery. And we can take away a number of points from this little interaction. So first, we get to see some of the x-rays that have been taken following Kevin's surgery. It's a little bit difficult to count the exact levels off the screen of the laptop here. But as near as I can tell, it looks as though the injury that Kevin suffered involved the T9 through T12 vertebrae or the T10 through the L1 vertebrae. But what we can see very clearly is that Kevin has undergone a four-level instrumented fusion with pedicle screws and rods on both sides of the spinal column. And this suggests that he has undergone a decompression with complete laminectomies of the vertebrae involved in the fusion. It's difficult to see from the laptop the presence of any bone graft between the vertebrae, but I'm assuming that that would have been used in this four-level fusion. The final takeaway from this appointment with his physician is that we can hear that his doctor saying that the full recovery after this injury will be approximately one year. And while we can see here that he is walking around normally and he appears to be able to function without any obvious deficits, we can expect that at this point, his day-to-day -day activities are relatively limited and that his physical demands are not particularly onerous. So there you have it. These are my thoughts on Kevin Hart's recovery status. So I hope that's been educational for you. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word for Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.